Lila, see the little red one there? Yeah. That's called a seed shrimp, I think. A shrimp? Well, they're not really shrimp, but they look like a seed, so they're called a shrimp. They're probably the same family. Anyway, you, you told me that you've been out uh, collecting insects in the pond? Yeah. What happened? Well, we went down to our pond, and we got some nuts, and we, if we saw something, we grabbed at it. Mm -hmm. We put it in little specimen jars, and then we looked it up in a book and mm -hmm. wrote down what it was. What did you find? Well, we found some leeches, and we found a uh, little trout, and we found a whole bunch of water boatmen and mm -hmm. so you'll find some shrimp and everything. In fact, there's a water boatman swimming along right there, right? You recognize yeah. him? They're mm -hmm. kind of funny. They look like a little bug with two oars that stick out, and they roll yeah. along. That's why they're called water boatmen. Well, the way I like to do it is to go down to the pond with a, a pail mm -hmm. and dig out some of the bottom, some of the middle, and some of the top, bring it home, and then put it in an aquarium like this. Let it settle for a day or two. Put a light over the top, and now you have the pond at home so that you can look at it at your leisure. Uh, you, there are some tools that you should have, magnifying glass, mm -hmm. so that when you do get an animal close by, you can take a good close look at it. A baster is also important. Why? Well, here. Let's, let's assume I got an animal right there. I push in on the top, like that. A couple bubbles come out, and then I can go just like that. And then you put it into a little glass like that so that you can study them much more closely. I've already collected some. See them going swimming around there? There's a three dragonfly nymphs mm -hmm. or more. Those are the ones with the, the three tails that stick out in the back. Yeah. They, and they breathe. There's, a leech. There's the leech, yes. See, this is beginning to settle. It's all coming down to the bottom. There's a freshwater shrimp. Yes, there's a little shrimp in there. My, fa my favorite are, are, the, are the dragonfly nymphs because uh, they don't look too much like dragonflies under the water, but they have a three-pronged tail, and that's how they breathe. How do they breathe with a tail? Well, they, they wag their tail back and forth as they're moving through the water, and there are little fine veins inside, and that's how they exchange, get the oxygen out of the water. Oh. Then eventually they'll go up to the surface, and their skin will crack open, and out will come a, a dragonfly. They don't look much like dragonflies right now. They're also very interesting because they're, they're great predators. They will sit on a branch and you can watch them in the magnifying glass and all of a sudden an underslung jaw comes out and grabs something and grabs it, takes it in. Yeah. So they're, they're fun because they, they're quite active. Then there's wiggly worms. See that wiggly worm up there? Yeah. That's neat. One of my favorites is a flatworm, which I haven't been able to find yet. They're interesting because they have two eye spots and they look sort of like they're cross-eyed. And uh, they've been doing a lot of experiments with them. You could do them too. They cut them in half, and each half grows into a new flatworm. You're kidding? Yeah, you can That'd cut them in several neat. pieces. Yes. So my <clears throat> people go to Africa to see the animals, right? You can see why I call this my uh, underwater safari, yeah. because the animals that you'll find are far more interesting than those you'll find in Africa, because they're so unusual. You get a book from the library as you did, and look them up. You can have hours and hours of fun with an underwater safari.